Hello, Internet. My name is Lave, and this week I watched A Cure for Wellness, which is directed by Gore Verbinski, who's had quite a varied career in terms of commercial and critical success, and he also tends to jump around from genres quite a lot as well. And I've got to be honest, I was really intrigued by the marketing for this film, which pitched it as a psychological drama slash horror, and I was well up for it. Dane DeHaan stars as a hungry young Wall Street executive who's got a bit of a scarred history and a questionable moral compass but is nevertheless a very driven young man. One day his superiors give him the job of retrieving one of the other CEOs who has gone AWOL at a wellness centre in the Swiss Alps. And when he gets there he realises strange things are afoot and now we have our movie. Now I know I'm not the first and I know I'm not going to be the last to point out the similarities between this and Martin Scorsese's Shutter Island. I mean Dane DeHaan even looks like Leonardo DiCaprio. But the similarities between other films does not stop there. Other people have rightly pointed out that Stanley Kubrick's The Shining is there. I saw everything from Carrie to Alien to Prometheus, Bram Stoker's Dracula, and even The Ring, which Gorm Fabinski also directed. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that that's a bad thing. I think there is a lot of effective imagery in this film, and I definitely think that the location shoot, wherever they shot the wellness center, does give the Overlook Hotel a run for its money. It's got that really homely, unhomely feel to it. I guess my problem with this film is its execution. It is a long film. It's two and a half hours and it really does feel like two and a half hours. But the problem is it gets so preoccupied in setting up how weird this world is. It just keeps going and going. At one point I thought, all right, I get that this is weird. Just get on with it. And it just seems to take forever for all of the pieces of the puzzle to fall into place which all builds to an unsatisfying ending, in my opinion. Now, some might argue that the director has done this deliberately to get under your skin, to make you feel a bit... Uh, which is in keeping with the theme of the film. But for me, it just made me question whether this film started off as a Netflix or Amazon Prime series, but they didn't have enough material to flesh out a full season, so they just condensed it into an overlong film. The only other bit of evidence that I've got to support that theory is the fact that they filmed it in 1.85 to 1 ratio, which didn't make it feel very cinematic, which is a shame because the film is actually very cinematic. And it's also a shame because there are some interesting themes that this film is sort of tackling. It's commentating on modern life, on corporate greed. There's a whole theme of water and purification and sexual metaphors, some more subtle than others. And some genuine moments that really did make me sit up in my seat. At one point I even went, oh my God. Yeah, David Cronenberg would have been proud with some of the body horror scenes in this. But the problem is those scenes were a bit few and far between and I felt myself slouching back into my seat again and getting quite bored. And then something else cool would happen, which overall it does feel like a shame. Performance wise, I haven't really got any complaints. I thought Dane DeHaan's Descent Into Madness was good. I also really liked Jason Isaacs as the owner of the wellness center. Despite the fact that his accent goes a bit wobbly in some places. Ma, oh, Mr. Lockhart, welcome to my wellness center. Would you like some venison? There are some other nice little cameos. I thought Mia Goth was very reminiscent of Carrie in some scenes. And I also liked Celia Imri as one of the other patients who is also starting to question her reality. Yeah, nothing to really complain about in terms of performances. I thought the cinematography was well executed and the CG overall I thought was really good apart from maybe a couple of moments, one in particular which did remind me of The Ring 2. And the sound design is suitably eerie and creepy. In many ways this film ticks all of the right boxes but it just felt overly long I did walk out feeling a bit disappointed. So that's my thoughts on a cure for wellness and pause the video if you want to take a closer look at my enjoyment tracker now. This film definitely has its moments I think it has got some interesting ideas I just think it could have been executed a hell of a lot better particularly in the edit suite. I think I probably will see this film again I think it does deserve a second viewing but I'm definitely going to wait until it comes on television. I don't think I want to sit through the cinema again for another two and a half hours. But I'm really interested to know what you thought about it. If you have seen it, let me know what you thought about it in the comments. I think there is a lot to discuss with this film. But thanks very much for watching my review. I really do appreciate it. If you can, give this video a like. And don't forget to share the lave. There is no cure. Subscribe.